I think technology is the ultimate tool for differentiating for students at different levels. Um, as a math teacher, I always have to teach solving equations, and I started to create these mazes on Prezi, which is um, a digital presentation software online. And the cool thing about Prezi is it gives you this zooming option, but it also gives you this unlimited two-dimensional space. And so I was able to create these giant mazes where the it wasn't clear from the start where you had to go. And based on the direction the kids traveled, I was able to tell if they knew what they were doing. And so if they reached a dead end, it would say, raise your hand. And I'd go over there and realize, okay, you just got the last three questions wrong. I'm going to give you like a really short mini lesson on how to do this and then let you continue on with the maze and redirect you. Um, so that was one thing. I mean, we use uh, Dragon Speak for kids that have um, uh, fine motor skill uh, issues. We use a lot of other technology programs. A lot of kids have laptops that they travel with. Um, but it really is the ultimate tool for differentiating, for enrichment. If you reach the end of the lesson first, I just, I never want a kid to be bored. And so I'll always have uh, supplemental uh, websites kind of on the ready uh, when I'm using technology. And I think that differentiation is especially key in our classrooms, particularly when we have struggling readers. And so we've seen these tools um, enable us to create learning groups within a classroom. And also in one instance, we've got a partner in Innovations for Learning that allows us to use a TutorMate tool mm -hmm. so that children who are especially struggling and behind are working with an actual person who's Skyped in who is helping them go through their reading um, lesson. And the teacher can focus and concentrate on other groups in the classroom while a person who is virtually teaching this one child um, is assigned and working on, on this particular um, struggling reader's uh, aptitude. And then the teacher can come back and check in, what have you, and that person who's Skyped in, they get tested after each lesson, and so you can see how they have progressed, and the teacher can use that information. Um, so that partner and that program is happening uh, in a number of, um, our, of our schools. And so that's really effective learning that can help us ensure that the entire classroom is not kind of brought to a halt because there are children who can't keep up. Yeah, likewise, uh, we have some teachers, when you said flip the classroom, you, you meant giving the information earlier, but in our school, some of the teachers are filming their lessons, their mini lessons, and then having a small group, and then halfway through the period, they'll switch. So everyone's engaged, and, and the pace can be um, you know, modified to meet that small group instead of having to stop when there's one or two kids that don't get it. Can we just take a couple minutes and talk about flipping the classroom? Because I feel like this is this like very hot buzzword in education right now. And I'd love for you to talk about just your experience you've had with it, but also to try to sort of unpack what that actually means in practice in schools and classrooms where, where you're using it. I think, I think from the principal's perspective, what I've noticed is most of our classrooms, and as a student, I experienced this too, right? We've get, with, we get a teacher doing a lecture. I don't understand what's happening. The teacher can't stop and, and spend 15 minutes explaining to me something around the content. By flipping the classroom, by letting me go home and interact with the content before I come in the next day, and in the next day, it's solving those problems. It's what questions did you, did you have difficulty with? Where were your challenges? Collaborating with other students. Um, it's, it's blogging the night before around the content so you understand the meaning of a kid's other kids can help you. The teacher can help you. It's safe, too. Uh, as an adolescent, particularly in high school, it's always dangerous to ask that difficult question that might get you embarrassed or make people realize you don't know what a right angle is. Um, being able to do that work the night before vis-a-vis -a, -vis a blog or a learning management system allows you to ask those questions um, so that the next day you can do the actual work of the work, the application of the content. Um, a lot of times our kids know algebra, they know science, but they don't know how to apply the content. Our classrooms don't get into the application of the content, which is why many of our kids go out of school and they don't know what any of this stuff actually means. So by flipping the classroom, you allow kids to experiment with the content in the evening and then actually apply the content in the classroom where the teacher, the expert, can help you facilitate your thinking around that. It just, it, it accelerates the, the learning process in such a way that if it's done right, you can solve most of your challenges um, the day before.